Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I will be teaching you the three different ways to swatch your dip powders. So without further ado, let's get started. Alrighty, so to get started, I'm just gonna quickly go through all the supplies that you'll be needing. I'll have everything linked in the description bar below. Alrighty, so right here I'm just showing you the swatch sticks that I prefer to use. So these ones have a square bottom to them. Um, these ones are kind of hard to find because certain distributors will say they have it, but they actually don't. These are the rounded bottom ones that most people do have, and here is just a quick comparison. So as you can see, the top of the rounded bottom ones are just a little bit more wonky, and the ones with the square bottoms are just better quality, and I just prefer them over the round bottom ones. But yeah, I'm going to try and leave a link down below to one, but it might not be the actual ones. So here I'm just showing the color that I chose to do today as an example for the swatch. It's called Helios from Rebel Nail and it is a sun changer. So now I'm just going to be laying out all my swatches and I'm just going to quickly label them top, under, and both. So these are the three different ways that you can actually do your swatches. So um, I'm just going to quickly write it down. So here I actually put bottom instead of under and I'm just going to show you a quick little hack. If you accidentally mess up or you know you just wrote the wrong word or it didn't come out the way you wanted to, you can actually just use some alcohol and a piece of napkin and just wipe it off and then you can rewrite over top. Before I get started, I'm just quickly going to be stirring up the powder. This just makes sure that it's nice and loose. And then I'm going to go in with my Pro Base here. I'm just using the Easy Care liquids. It doesn't really matter whatever liquids you have on hand. And I'm going in with the top swatch. So you're just going to paint an even coat of Pro Base from cuticle to free edge on the swatch stick. And this is what I mean by top. So when you do the top version, all you're doing is you're swatching only the top of the swatch stick. So this is what the first coat looks like for the top. And then we're gonna stir it again before we do the second swatch, which is gonna be under. So this is my preferred method of doing swatches just because it gives a really even look to all of them and they all just look super cohesive. So all you're doing is you're painting the pro base under the swatch stick. So here I ended up finding like a weird piece of goop on the side of the rim and I just took it off. And then this is what the first coat for the underside looks like. And then we're going to move on to both. So the both method is kind of the same thing as under. I'm going to stir up the powder again just to make sure it's nice and fluffy. And then I'm just going to take the pro base and paint it on the underside of the swatch stick. So now that the first coat is done, I'm just going to take a fluffy brush as well as a stiff manicure brush. I'm going to dust off all the excess powder and repeat the exact same steps for the second coat. So apply a thin and even coat of Pro Base from the cuticle to the free edge of the swatch stick. Um, and I'm going to do the same thing for all three of them. So for the top, I'm doing the second coat only on the top. The underside one, I'm doing a second coat only on the underside. And the both swatch, I'm doing a, another swatch on the underside as well. So it's the same exact steps as the first one, just repeat those again. So right here I just noticed a small shiny spot on my under swatch stick so I just kind of dunked it back in the powder just to get full saturation. So 
So now we're going to be moving on to the third coat for the top and the under swatch sticks. It's going to stay exactly the same. Um, you're going to follow the same steps as you did from the first and the second coat. Nothing's going to change. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to apply base and then I'm just going to dip into the powder. Alrighty, so now we're moving on to the swatch stick for both and this one is different because we're going to be applying a layer of base on the top of the swatch stick so this is kind of the best of both worlds i know there's a lot of people that give me criticism because i say that i only swatch the underside and those people say that it's you know not the best way because it doesn't show an accurate representation of the colors which makes sense so this might be a good option for those people so i'm just gonna swatch on the top and then we're gonna let it dry for one to two minutes So now we're going to go in with step two, which is the activator, and I'm going to just quickly activate all of the swatches. And then this thing right here is, I believe, a brush holder, and my friend Carol got it for me in the States, and I just think it's perfect for holding your swatches. So now that everything is dried, I'm just quickly showing you what they look like and I'm going to be working on the top swatch. So I'm just going to first go in and file the shape on the sides. I'm very, very picky about my swatches. So for me personally, this is not my preferred method because of this little ridge right here. Um, I don't like my swatches to look bulky. It's just kind of like I said, my personal opinion, I treat my swatches as if they are my nails or somebody else's nails. So I just don't prefer this top method. But if you like that out there, that's completely fine. That is why I wanted to show the three different ways. So that is the top swatch done. And now I'm going to be moving on to the under swatch. And I'm just going to file over the shape on the sides as well. And pretty much at this point, it is completely done, but because, like I said, I'm very picky about my swatches, there's a little scuff right here, and on the side, there's a little bit of hangover of the dip, so I'm just going to quickly go over and buff it, and then that's pretty much it for that one, but if you want it to be done after you activate, then that's completely fine, and I'm just showing you how smooth the top part is, it's not bulky at all. And just as a little quick comparison of the top swatch and the under swatch, you can see the little ridge on the top swatch and there's no ridge on the underside. So like I said, this is all personal preference, but I just wanted to teach you guys the three different ways that you can swatch, just so you can pick your favorite. And then here is the both swatch. So like I said, this is the best of both worlds. And because we only did one dip on top, it really cuts back on the bulkiness. And I believe that this will be probably one of the most popular ways to swatch just because you can get the full accurate representation of the color and also not the full bulkiness of the dip powder on top. And then this is what they're all looking like at this point. And you can go in with your step two and your step three, your activator and your finishing gel. But I personally like to use a gel top coat for my swatches. Like I said, once again, it's personal preference. So I'm just going to quickly apply a coat of this tack-free gel top coat on top and then cure it for 60 seconds. So this is what the swatches look like when they come out of the lamp. So I'm not sure if you can tell a difference, but I definitely can. Um, the top swatch just looks a little bit more bulky on the side. So here's a quick little close up of the top swatch and that little ridge that I told you about. If it doesn't bother you, then that's not a problem. Um, the underside, everything looks perfect, nice and smooth. And then for both, kind of the same thing. So in this clip, I'm just showing you some swatches that I've done before with just the under method and why I prefer it. Even for this color Spark, 
I can still see the glitters perfectly fine. It might not be as sparkly as the underside, but to me that's completely fine and that's how I like it. Um, these are the same swatches in the sun, just so you can kind of see what they look like. And then in this next clip, I'm just going to show you all of the swatches that I showed you today and what they all look like. So hopefully in this video, you learned something new and hopefully you were able to learn how to do your swatches. And thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.